Matthew chapter 12. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day. That would be Saturday. Through the corn. Now this corn is wheat. It's not the kind of corn you find in America. And his disciples were a hunger. So the disciples are back with him. And began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. So what they're doing, they're grabbing the grain, they're rubbing it in their fingers, and they're just eating. They got, you know, a little appetite. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold thy disciples, do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Now you remember when we close the last chapter, he says, He says, Come unto me, all ye that are labored and are heavy laden. This is one of them. What is so hard of taking grain and rubbing it between your fingers and having a little uh, morsel of wheat or bar whatever they're eating? This is the burdens that the Pharisees are putting on the people. And yet, there's no burden put on themselves watching Jesus and the disciples and complaining about it. But he, Jesus, said unto them, Have you not read? Ooh. Don't you know the scriptures? What David did? When he was hungered, and they were with him, his troops. How he entered in the house of God, and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. And that was the bread that was put out on the table. That was for the priest. That wasn't for David. That wasn't for his troops. Or have you not read in the law? Ooh. How that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Well, how can they profane the Sabbath? They had to work then, they? They had to uh, tend to the altar. What about the boys when the eighth day the circumcision fell upon the Sabbath day? What about uh, trimming the lambs? What about the incense? What about all the things? Jesus said, listen, you guys are little tiny grips of, of corn. And look what David did. And look what your own people did. But I say unto you that in this place, in this cornfield, like Jesus is talking to Peter, upon this rock, it's present right now where he is. This cornfield is one greater than the temple. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And it says, where it says, where is it? That in this place is one, that one, in other Bibles it says something. Something is greater. They just made Jesus a, from a one to an it. Well, that's the problem they're having with transgenders now. You got to start changing your pronouns now. You can't, I just read articles that you can't say he or she. You got to address it as it. Just for these people don't know what they're doing. But if he had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Listen, there were sacrifices provided in the law, yes. But God wanted mercy. David committed two sins where there was no offering. And yet God showed him mercy. These Pharisees, you're eating a little bit. There's no mercy. You know, you guys are really hungry. Uh, we got some bread with us or something. But not sacrifice. And you see that all through the scriptures. Yes, you have a sacrifice to do. But God is also the God of mercy. He would not have condemned the guiltless. So Jesus just said his disciples were innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord even on the Sabbath day. I'm in charge of it all. I'm the one that set it up. And when he was departed thence, he went into their... Knows that. Knows that. Knows their. Not his. Is he God? Is Jesus God? That's not his synagogue. Now you're going to start seeing Jesus close the book. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Is it lawful to have some bread or some uh, grain on the Sabbath? 
that they might accuse him. And they're not asking to, to, for a real question. They, they want to get him and try him and get him killed now. But it's not his time. The door is closing. Start noticing that. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep? And if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? Hey, you, imagine, you just imagine maybe one of these guys did have a sheep just recently fall in the pit. I don't think Jesus pulled this right out of the air. One of those guys, hey, didn't you just have a sheep? On the Sabbath, didn't you just have a sheep and you pulled them out? What's wrong with that? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Oh, look at that for PETA. Save the whale, save the, no, save your soul. In Mark 3 5, the Bible says Jesus is angry. Wherefore, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath day. See, there were restrictions on the set, but you do well. You don't tell your children, oh, we're not going to eat today completely. No, you, you, the food was prepared the day before, and then you eat. Then saith he to the man, stretch forth thy hand. Now, that's a physical impossibility. His hand's withered. And he stretched it forth. Before the Pharisees, this guy showed his faith. What he could not do, he did. It was restored whole like as the other. You know, God's always asking us to take that one step of faith that we can't do. To show that God can do. Then we give God the credit. And when you don't give God the credit, repent of your sins and give God, God the credit. Then the Pharisees went out and held a consul, and that would be the Sanhedrin, against him, how they might destroy him. Not just kill him, but let's get rid of him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from then. It's not his time. From now on, you're going to start reading about parables he's not going to speak openly anymore he's not going to speak fresh he's he's going to speak to them that they're going to, oh, what was all that about and great multitudes follow him and he healed them all notice all the healing all the healing and charged them that they should not make him know why because the pharisees are out to kill him and it's not his time it's almost like when God came down and saw that tower of Babel, and it's like when God saw man before he drowned out in man's imagination, man's ability. You don't understand what man can do. That God has to step in and do something. Look what man has done since the garden, since Cain and Abel. It was a stick, a fist, or whatever, wherever Abel was killed with. Now we got all kinds of things that all we got to do is press a button to kill man. We can pay somebody to kill man. Yeah, but we boast of a great health care system that no man can afford. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant, who I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul, this is God speaking, my soul is well pleased. I will put, now get this, my spirit, the Holy Spirit upon him. Get that. And he shall show judgment to the Gentile. Ooh. Jesus is already now saying, you know what? I've had it with you guys. I'm going to the dead dog. He shall not strive, that would be contend, dispute, nor cry. You know, he won't cry foul. Give me a lawyer, call 911. Neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. He's not going to raise a ruckus. He's not going to riot. This is going to speak. A bruised reed shall he not break. It's already weak. 
In other words, Jesus is not going to rock the boat. He is not going to cause contentions. He's going to do what God has sent him to do, and it, it's going to be fulfilled, and he's not going to... Whatever happens to Jesus, which he ends up being, you know, tried, getting beaten, and getting the, the thorns upon his... He did not deserve that. He did not cause that. And Pilate even said himself four times, I find no fault in this guy. He didn't do nothing. A smoky flat shall he not clench. Well, how can you do that? And let it go. Till he send forth judgment on the victor. Then when he comes to the second advent, then he'll, he'll do all this. Right now he's the lamb prepared. The lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. But when he comes back as a lion... And his name, look at this, shall the Gentiles trust. He's rejected by the Jews. There I am. There is the church. In Matthew. See, you want to find the church in Matthew, there it is. After the Jews say, you know what, we've had it with you. The leaders. And if you think that the Jewish leaders have rejected Jesus Christ and God is about to forget them, and God's, you know, listen, they're his people. They're going to get judged. What do you think God's going to do with nations that where the people have given up on God and Jesus Christ? If he does it to his own people, you think he's going to let other nations get away with it? I trow none. Then, after all that, you know, the guy with the withered hand, they're angry with him. They want to kill him. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. This guy's really a, he's possessed, he's blind, and he, he can't speak. That's the condition of Israel right now, where Jesus is living. They are possessed. They are now blind, because he's going to start speaking parables. And dumb, they're not going to be able to speak. And he healed them. Only Jesus can heal those conditions. Insomuch that the blind and dumb both spank and saw. And all the people were amazed. Maybe there's three of them. Because that's what they were blind and dumb. And that the dumb and blind. Probably made three of them now, I see. For unto, unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him. Insomuch that the blind and dumb both spank and saw. And all the people were amazed. What was amazed? Haven't they been seeing Jesus already doing healing? What were the Pharisees doing? They were plotting to kill him. And they're like, Jesus is still doing what he's doing. You figured he go in hiding. He leave, go somewhere else. And said, Is not this the son of David? Ooh, king. King. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow, Jesus Christ, does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, twice, the prince of the devils, Satan. And Jesus knew their thoughts. So they said it among themselves in their heart, and said unto him, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Gone. You cannot have a kingdom where people are inside that you got a civil war. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. You got a family in one house and they're they're destroying each other. The house will be condemned one day. And if Satan cast out Satan, all right? If I did he just told you who the prince of the devils are. He just told you Beelzebub. It's Satan. Scripture is scripture. If Satan cast out Satan, all right, that's what you're saying. He is divided against himself. How shall how shall then his kingdom stand? He's gonna have a kingdom for all eternity in hell. He's got powers. He's got his devils. He ain't casting out his own. He's causing it. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils. By whom do your children cast them? Oh, now you know they're angry. You know that their fists are clenched. 
But you know what it shows you? They're also doing exorcisms. You wonder how much they're charging where Jesus is doing it for free. He said, okay, if I'm casting out these devils by Elzebub, what do you what are you what are your children doing it by? So Jesus acknowledged that there is such thing as exorcisms. Therefore they shall be your judges. What that remark right there, what does what what scripture have you already read reminds you of that remark? Therefore they shall be your your own children will be your own judges. Judge not, least ye be judged. For what meat you judge? All right. You're telling me I'm doing it by bills above. And I'm I'm God's son. I am God. You wait till your children stand in your judgment. And when you take judge not, least ye be judged. Let me go back over here. Get that verse, and I'll read both verses for you. It's it's a weird thing that when you're going to put this all together. Because the impartable sin, judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, ye shall be judged. Call me Satan. And with what measure you meet, remember he said, I already have mercy, it shall be measured to you again. Your sons are going to judge you, your fathers, their fathers, for what they're saying. Because they're doing the same thing Jesus is doing. But if I cast out devils by the, get this, Spirit of God. You say, listen, how are your children doing it? You're, you're saying I'm doing it by Satan. I'm saying I'm doing it by the Holy Spirit. That's Jesus saying. The Holy Spirit is giving me the power to do what I just did. Then the kingdom of God has come unto you. It's right there. The kingdom of God is there. Jesus Christ. He's about to shut it. He says, the power that you just said it was Satan's, I'm telling you it's the Holy Spirit. you got to get that for what's coming up. It's one of the biggest doctrine problems is showing up pretty soon. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house? Now, this strong man is Satan. His house. And spoil his goods. Remember, if, if every kingdom divided against itself is brought... To desolation. If Satan casts out Satan, he's divided. So, else, how can one enter in a strong man's house and spoil his goods? His his devils. Except he first bind the strong man. Revelation 20, verse 2. And then he will spoil his house. The one that does the binding. Jesus is going to spoil the house of Satan by the millennial reign. Then after that, the earth is just gone, kapui. Peter says, there's a fervent heat. Then Satan's, Satan's kingdom's gone. Because then he's cast off in the lake of fire, which burns forever. He that is not with me is against me. Now it's the people in 1223. And all the people were amazed. They're not fighting Jesus. They're like, wow, what is this guy doing? And he that gathereth not. This is the Pharisees 12, 24. You know, you're doing this by Beelzebub. He that gathereth not with me scatters. They are scattering the nation. And you know what the nation is going to do because of the Pharisees pretty soon? They're going to cry, crucify them. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. How's that? All your sin. There is no elite sinner that God will never not forgive. But blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto you. Now there are people teaching today that if you do the unpardonable sin, You'll never be saved. You'll burn eternity. By blasphemy again. Some will say by not speaking tongue. Making fun of the tongues. Making fun of the spirit. 
And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. So you can use Jesus' name as a cuss all your life. Come to Calvary and ask God to forgive your sins. And Jesus, okay, fine, yeah. Well, what about those times I used your name in vain, Lord? What times? They're under the blood. I don't remember. Now remember, Jesus is standing with a crowd of people. The Pharisees are on hand. Here's a guy who just had the devil taken out of him. They said Jesus did it by Satan. He rebukes them. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost. Now run back to verse 28. But if I cast out devils by the Holy, by the Spirit of God. Speaketh against the Holy Ghost. That Spirit of God is the Holy Ghost. It shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world. Neither in the world to come. These Pharisees that open their mouth cannot ever be saved. Because they said the Spirit of God was Satan. This unpardonable sin cannot be done today. You would have to say to the Holy Spirit doing a work through Jesus Christ that Jesus you're Satan. And there's no room for repentance for that. You can't do it today. So don't worry about today committing the unpardonable sin. It was already committed. And Jesus took those people that did it and said, you know what, you're condemned. And he's done with them. That's some serious business. He didn't make the tree good. He's going on. And the fruit good. Well, that's reasonable. Or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruits. Well, there's a good tree and there's a corrupt tree. Right now, the nation of Israel is a good tree. The Pharisees are corrupt tree, fruit, and tree. And they're going to turn some Jews into corruptness. Not all. Now, where do you see this expression? Old generation of vipers. Look at that showing up. Jesus is angry. I'm glad he has a cause. Because what we read earlier would make him in danger of hellfire. He's angry because what these Pharisees are thinking about him. What they're going to do to him. And what they're going to do to the people. You generation of vipers. How can you being evil speak good things? Remember the good fruit? The corrupt fruit? Don't even put on your, your good fruit. You can't be. You got a wormhole, and inside that fruit is a worm. For out of the abundance of the heart, see, it's in their heart. See, there's a song for Christians in my, in my heart that rings a melody. For these Pharisees, in my heart, I hate God and I hate Jesus, and that's never going to change. So don't go acting like you're goody-goody people. That's what he's saying. You may have the people fooled, but you ain't got me fooled. I'm talking about with Jesus and these guys. He's angry with them. And yet the mercy is he doesn't call down fire right now, which he could. For all the buns of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Why does a man cuss? Because it's in his heart. And Jeremiah said, the heart is wicked above all things. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringing forth good things. So a good man, he if, if a person does good, that's out of the heart. That's what their heart is. That's not brain. And an evil man out of the evil treasures bringing forth evil things. What is the problem with the world today and all that's going on and all these killings and these sodomites and all that? It's in their heart. 
and Satan is just lavishing and letting them wolf in it and their their conscience is being sneered. You know your conscience is the best weapon you got against your heart. You better not ever defile your conscience. You know what kept me out of prison? And I I think right now five times I think I can count right up now I can put it on a piece of paper I should have been in prison. Including one time talking to police detectives in their police station. You know what kept me out of trouble? My conscience, not my heart. My heart wants to do evil. My heart, my heart comes with, with wicked imaginations. The other day I was thinking about destroying the whole world. Wait a minute, no, I can't do that. I'm a Christian. If I destroyed the whole world for Jesus, I'd be no better than a Muslim. I had to repent of that. Blowing up places, and, you know, taking a nuclear missile and, and blowing up the dumb of the rock and blowing up all these, these, oh, wait a minute, I'm the wait a minute, that's wicked, that's, that's Islam thinking, that's the heart thinking, I'm wrong. I'm not told to do that, I'm told to go and preach the gospel, not bombs. See, my heart's still wicked, my heart still wants vengeance. Don't ever think you're not a sinner. But I say unto thee, unto you, that every, now I wish I could, this is a very important verse. I wish I could remember where it is. I can never remember where it is. Chapter 12, verse 36. There's no way I can figure out where this verse is, but get it. But I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking. If you've got a red letter Bible, this is red letter. That every idle word that man speak, they shall speak, they shall give an account there of in the day of judgment. Guy walks into a bar. Ouch. Ouch. You're going to give account for that. Oh, all oh, the troubles you're going through, brother. I know exactly what you. Do you see that guy? You see what, that, what he's wearing? Every idle word. God is going to bring him. And I can believe that's going to show up in the judgment seat of Christ, even though we're in Matthew. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. You know what my words are? The word of God. You know, if I go, and which I do, if I go preach on the street, and I and I quote the Bible, I got the page open, and hey, that's that's the word of God. If I say something stupid, that's an idle word by me, and I'll be judged for that. And my idle, stupid words, I may turn somebody away from Jesus Christ and not intended to. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. How's that one? Well, what can you be condemned? Hail Mary, full of grapes. Allah is God. Satan rules. I don't believe in God. I got my religion. I shut up. You know people are going to be judged by that? If some guy come up to you, whatever you do, and he tries to stop you, he tries to put you, he's going to be judged for those words. Saved and lost. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees. Oh boy, here we go. Answer saying, Master, <laughs> we would see a sign for. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's a guy who's got a withered hand. Stick it out. Boing. I wonder if there's any sound effect. Boing, crack, snap, crackle, pop. Boing. <coughs> John 2:18, 1 Corinthians 1:22, Exodus 4:1. The nation of Israel is founded on sign. When they say we want a sign from thee, they are in all perfect right to say it. Moses came to Israel. Here's a sign. Water turned to blood. The leprosy. The, the rod turning to a snake. All the plagues upon. They were all signs. But after the saying, hey, you're, you're Satan. Hey, we're going to kill him. That's, how can we kill him? Oh, we desire a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, Look at Jesus. What would Jesus do? An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Ooh. And there shall no sign be given to it, 
But the sign of the prophet Jonas, and that would be Jonah. Now you are probably just scratching your head. And he's gonna make them mad. Because Jonas went to a Gentile city and the Gentile city got right. Ooh. And Jonah didn't want to go. You see how he's closing the book on him? I'll give you a sign. I'm going to go to the Gentiles and they're all going to get right. While you sit under your little fig tree in your booth and soak. That's how the book of Jonah ends. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the, in the whale's belly. Scholars don't believe that. What was that great fish? Jesus said it's a whale. Well, whale's not a fish. Jesus made it. He can call it whatever he wants to call it. As a matter of fact, he didn't call it. He, he brought it to Adam and said, Adam, what are you going to name that thing? Oh, that's weird. That's almost bad as that platypus over there. Oh, wow, whale. I almost thought Adam named it, saved the whale. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, in the many churches, I've got them written down in my Bible. I've heard messages that Jonah never died. And he never went to hell. Then Jesus never died and Jesus never went to hell. Because Jonah was that sign. So you're a liar. You need to shut up. And you need to let the Bible say what it says. They both died and they were both resurrected. And he doesn't, you know, it's a parable to him. He didn't tell him what he just said. As Jonah was three days and three nights, and that's it. He doesn't explain to him. They're left there. Yeah, so. And they may not even believe he died. Many don't. And then the men of Nineveh. Ooh, he's got to rub that in. Those are Gentiles. Shall rise in judgment with this generation. Uh, what generation? The evil and adulterous generation. Oh, Jesus. Be nice. Calm down. You don't have no love. That's not love, Jesus. Show a little love. God just loves Jesus. With this generation and shall condemn it, John chapter 3. You know, the cockroach message I got out of John chapter 3. They, they love darkness. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. Look, ooh, the Gentiles got right. You guys didn't repent. You guys didn't get right. But the Gentiles did. And they're going to judge you one day. Ooh. That's hard. That's mean. And you know what that verse implies? The judgment, the great white throne judgment. If you go knocking on doors, if you preach on the streets, or you leave gospel track, whatever God's called you to do to be evangelist, the people that rejected him, you're going to stand up and stand in condemnation of those people. Now, we go to the farmer's market. All the people at the farm. Oh, we never. Hey, every family, step up again, please. You remember these guys? Oh, I remember that loud mouth. Yeah, okay, very much. You, you just condemned your own mouth. Now go to hell. Nineveh is going to rise up with the generation that Jesus is with right now, and they're going to condemn them. The ones that got right in Nineveh. The ones that repented are going to step up and say, you guys were idiots. We had a mean, ugly, uh, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Rebellious Jew come in and preach, what was it, five, six words, and we repented at that. You have all these signs, wonders, and miracles going on. You have the Son of God, and you wouldn't get right? <laughs> Behold, a greater than Jonas is here. So Jesus is telling them about the resurrection, but he's doing it in parables. So they cannot understand. How's that? How's that for a turn off? He told them, prophesied what's going to happen to him, and they don't get it. And the queen of the south, ooh, there's another Gentile shall rise up in the judgment with this generation, the adulterers and evil, and shall condemn it. 
just with Nineveh. For she came from the outer parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon and Jonah are a type of Christ. Jonah and Solomon and the Queen of Sheba and the men of Nineveh were real people, according to Jesus Christ. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. How's that? That Queen of Sheba came a long way to hear the words. The word is here living amongst you right now, and you won't receive it. You see, when a man at the great white throne judgment is condemned to the lake of fire, there will be plenty of witnesses to put him in that fire, guaranteed. I don't believe God's going to have any man where he will never know or couldn't know. I had no way to know. I I talked with a missionary one time that came out, and he's in the middle of Mongolia. And have you ever seen pictures of Mongolia desert? It's just sand. Absolutely sand. North, east, south, west, all points of the compass. There was a guy who was trying to find God, trying to get right. That guy in the middle of the Mongolian desert found a Bible in the sand read it and got saved don't tell me about the heathen when the unclean spirit is going out of a man he's unsaved he the unclean spirit he walketh through the dry places There's no water seeking rest no rest and findeth none Seeing like the man, the rich man in hell, Luke 11. And he saith, the, the unclean spirit, I will return unto my house. Go back to uh, verse 26. No, verse 29. House is the body. From whence I came out. So here's a here's an unclean spirit that's come out of a man. And he's like, well, where do I go? No pigs around here. And when he is come, he findeth it empty. The house, the body, reformation. When he's come, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Works. Works. No blood. Ain't no blood yet. You got the broom, the dust pan out. That's works. Then he go, then goeth he the unclean spirit and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Then enter in and dwell therein. The last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Match that back to verse thirty nine and match that back to the Pharisees. You guys can clean up your act. You can get reformation, but you're seven times as worse. Now, since I preach to you, since I've given you the word of the Father, since I've shown you my miracle, you are seven times as worse. Then you added calling me, calling the Holy Spirit, Satan. You want to know the group of people who's in trouble? These Pharisees. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brother stood, brethren, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, desiring to speak with him. They want to talk to Jesus. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother, thy brother stand without. They're outside. They're over there. They can't come in. They're desiring to speak with him. But he answered and said unto him that told him, who is my mother? Who, who is my? Who are my brethren? It's kind of cold. That's not the loving Jesus. Meanie Jesus. That's how you're gonna treat Mary. And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples. Twelve of them. And said, Behold my mother and my brethren. Exclamation point. 
He said it with oomph. <laughs> For whosoever, there's that whosoever, anybody, anybody, any male, female, whatever race, whatever age, shall do the will of my Father. So you have to know what the will of God is. You got to study to show thyself approved unto God, a right workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You better find out what the will of God is for your life, for your dispensation, for to be brethren with Jesus, which is in heaven. So there's probably a father somewhere else. I know where he is. He's walking to and fro the earth, going to Job 1 and 2, John 8, 44. The same is my brother. Oh, he has a brother. He told you the brethren were his brother and sister and mother are those that do the will of the Father. So Jesus just mocked another religion by saying, I had brothers and sisters. Perpetual virgin, you can throw that out in the garbage can. There's my mother and there's my brethren. But those who do the will of the Father, they're more kin than my... I don't even know. You can't say blood family. I say blood family. It'd be step stepbrothers and stepsisters. Wow, you can't even say blood because it's by the mother, not Joseph. Ooh, that's an interesting statement. Kin. And remember, he's more kin to them then the brother to the brother and the brother to the sister because Joseph adopted him. That's more kinship. That's more of a relation according to the law. 